Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. Today I want to focus on two issues with pivot tables and how to resolve them. Issue number one, you've got two pivot tables based on the same data, something like this. You want one pivot table to display revenue per month and the other one to display revenue per quarter. And every time you change one, they both change. Issue number two, and this is a less likely scenario, but I have seen it happen. You have multiple pivot tables based on the same data source. You make changes to the data, but you only want one of the pivot tables to be updated. When you select Analyze Refresh, which should just update the pivot table your cursor's in, it updates them all. As an aside, even if you use VBA and specify the name of the pivot table in the macro, it still updates both the pivot tables. Stay with me and I'll show you how to solve both these problems. I'm using Excel on the Mac for this demo. However, what I'm going to show you works on both Windows and the Mac. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo files from the link in the description below. To understand what's happening, you need to know what happens when you create a pivot table. When this pivot table was created, with it being the first pivot table in this file, behind the scenes, Excel created a copy of the source data. This copy of the data, known as the pivot cache, is part of this workbook, but is stored in the computer's memory rather than the cells of the worksheet, which means you can't actually see it. If I change the pivot table, for example, apply a filter or a sort or add another column, Instead of updating the pivot table by loading the data in from the worksheet cells, it uses the data in the cache. If I add more data to the source and refresh the pivot table, the cache gets updated and the pivot table gets updated from the cache. So why does Excel do this? It seems a long-winded way to work. As I said, the cache is stored in memory and it's a lot faster for Excel to access data stored in a computer's memory than it is to access data stored in the worksheet cells. But it's not all good news. Because the cache is a copy of the source data, the size of the workbook increases. Also, and this is the main point of this video, the cache is shared with all the pivot tables in the workbook. Now, you might think that's good news. Because if the cache wasn't shared, say you had five pivot tables in a file, you'd need five cached copies of the data, and that would seriously increase the size of your workbook. So from that point of view, yes, a shared cache is a benefit. But the shared cache is the cause of the problems that I outlined at the start of the video. Any grouping is applied to all the pivot tables using the same pivot cache. So that's why I couldn't group one pivot table by month and another by quarter. Both pivot tables were based on the same cache. And when you refresh one pivot table, all the pivot tables linked to the same cache get refreshed. So let me show you how to fix the problem. Here's another workbook. I need two pivot tables, one to show revenue per month, and another to show revenue per quarter. To do this, I'll need two caches. Each pivot table will be based on a separate cache. Yes, doing this will increase the size of the file, but that's the price you pay. The source data has been converted to a table. If I click on the table menu, you can see that the table is called table one. That's actually the name that Excel assigned when the table was created. And the pivot table is based on table one. So if I click on pivot table analyze, change data source, we can see that the pivot table is based on table one. If I create a second pivot table in the usual way, click back on the data and say insert pivot table, Excel will automatically base the new pivot table on the one and only pivot cache in this file, the one that was created when I created this pivot table. So this is what I do. I convert my table back to a range by clicking table, convert to range and clicking yes. So that data is no longer a table. Then I immediately convert the data back into a table by clicking on insert table, checking the settings and clicking OK. 
It's actually named the table Table 1 because the original Table 1 has disappeared. But I have seen it where it's named it Table 2. It doesn't matter what the table name is. You can leave it as Table 1, you can leave it as Table 2, or you can change it to a name of your own. I'll then create a pivot table from this table by clicking on Insert Pivot Table, leaving the source as Table 1, sticking the pivot table into J6 and clicking OK. And then I will drag order date into rows and drag revenue into values. Then I will change the months to quarters by right clicking on one of the month names, selecting group, selecting quarters and clicking OK. By converting the table back to a plain range and then creating a new table, when the second pivot table was created, Excel created another cache. And although the original table one no longer exists, the cache that was created when this pivot table was created does still exist. So there are two caches in this file. If I go and add some more data to the source table, which I'll do just by copying and pasting rather than retyping, and then select data refresh all, we can see that both pivot tables have updated, even though they're both based on separate caches. Another way to create separate caches is to use the pivot table wizard. Before 2007, the pivot table wizard was the only way to create a pivot table. It's still part of Excel, but it's hidden away. Now, I'm not going to show you that method in this video for two reasons. One, I've already covered it in a previous video, which I'll link to in the description. And two, the pivot table wizard isn't available in the Mac version of Excel. And in the interests of inclusivity, I want to show you a solution that can be used on both Windows and Mac platforms. A third way to resolve this issue is to store the data in the data model and not the spreadsheet. And pivot tables based on the data model don't use caching. But that's a topic for another day. Well, I hope that's been useful. As always, thank you for watching. If you found the video useful, please give it a like. And if you'd like to stay up to date with what I'm up to, you can subscribe to the channel. You can also sign up to my free newsletter, which you can do at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.